Hello and welcome, welcome. My name is Wendy DeMoss. I'm the founder of the Sacred Sexual Music Festival. And I started it back in 2018. And it was, you know, it was a big deal at that time. Uh, you know, but I just so felt divinely led to bring this place of beauty that really brings our innocence and the power of our sexuality and, and enhances that. And, and it was focused more around the Me Too movement was happening, uh, the Harvey Weinstein era. And, you know, our beautiful sexuality was getting a bad rap. And we needed some awareness, some shifting of perspectives. And like, for example, here's a part of it, like the mission statement. I wanted to contribute to a future where we are more at peace with the power and innocence of sex. In so doing, suffering is transformed and people are free to experience and express the pleasure and power of being alive. And it was so much of it was also my own healing. You know, I believe so many of us, so many, probably all of us, have some healing around sexuality. And I thought by, by transforming the way we talk about sex, we introduce a new communication standard that supports sexual well-being. So there's everything is open to talk about, everything. You know, I'll, uh, I'm gonna tell you that later. There's a little clip in the uh, sizzle reel from last year. We'll, I'll show that later. And, uh, and it, yes, I just wanted to just emphasize that we talk about anything and everything because there's nothing to judge and nothing is shameful. So this festival that's happened in person and online last year was the first year online plus it's been i've held it in vancouver twice vancouver canada edmonton alberta winnipeg manitoba and coming up we'll be doing it in prince george in british columbia it's uh it's to provide information music and experiences through festivals that uplift and help us remember our sacred bodies our sacred minds our sacred innocence so i have some amazing guests on that are presenters that will be at the festival this weekend. This weekend, April 2nd and 3rd, Pacific time from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time. And it was such a variety of topics. I think you'll have a great time. We really feel like family. That's how it felt last year. We just like blah, 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 and, and chatting. And it was uh, super fun, so informative, and deeply healing. You know, I, I, I'll be playing Chant Your Heart Open, the chants and uplifting songs I hope you'll like. And Will Blunderfield, he'll be singing songs as well. And Will is, he's on the same label as Sarah McLaughlin. So just to give you an idea of his caliber, he's pretty amazing. So I'd love to just bring you all on uh, and tell you about our first presenter, Hema Latha. Hema, this is a little bit about her. Hema helps clients release what's blocking them from achieving their full potential so that they can freely live a life of purpose and passion. And she's really making the rounds. She's been on conferences lately. I've been seeing your name, Hema. I'm so happy for you because you're getting such important information out there. And she works with clients on topics such as abundance mindset, intimacy and relationship coaching, and generational trauma. You know, that is coming up now to, for people to talk about. It's, we're ready to really deal with that. I'd love to hear more about that. Um, her, her techniques include mindfulness, breath work, and a focus on somatic connection and awareness. And, oh, she's doing two workshops. That's how amazing she is. She's also <laughs> teaching, <laughs> she also teaches spiritual teachers and leaders how to dismantle racism, bias, and oppression. Please welcome Hema Latha. Thank you for Thank joining you. us today, Emma. Thank you, Wendy. You know, you are so inspiring as I'm listening to you read the mission statement for Sacred Sexual Music Festival. It just it just warms my heart and just hearing your your background story on on this. So I, I'm so honored to be part of this and honored to be part of the team. So thank you for having me. This is exciting. My pleasure. My deep pleasure. Yeah, Let's... you know, it's uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. Um, you know, the word, you use the word trauma, and mm. you had said, you know, that's something that's coming up for a lot of us. 
And I'm going to agree, you know, I was actually at a retreat this past weekend, sort of working on myself and meditating. But a lot of what came up was, you know, what, what have we inherited from our ancestors? Mm. What is, what is some of the trauma that we carry around in our body that we don't even know where it necessarily comes from? And so uh, this is something that I think more and more people are really digging into and wanting to understand because sometimes we carry things around, um, in our bodies that don't necessarily belong to us. Like there was a client of mine that I worked with and she was feeling fearful all the time. And what we figured out was it wasn't her fear necessarily, it was her mom. She was carrying around a lot of fear that her mom had had from, from her generation and what she had lived through. Um, you know, she had lived through um, World War II and had been very kind of, uh, the mindset there was very, you know, restrictive and, and not a lot of abundance. And there was just some, you know, World War II, there's a lot of fear. And so we, you know, we started to deconstruct that. So I think it's really fascinating to talk about, to talk about trauma and that people are wanting to dig in more. So it's a very exciting time. Yes. Oh, well, let me bring on some more presenters and I'd love to bring that topic up for discussion. You know, let's talk about that. And uh, uh, I'd like to bring on Karen Monroe Capel. And Karen, I've known Karen from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada for many years ago. And it's I'm just delighted that you're here today. Let me tell you a little bit about Karen. Before becoming a registered massage therapist, and I know, Karen, that you've dealt with trauma in the bodies. When you're dealing with bodies and you're massaging, you know, you have such a sensitivity uh, that I know that that's come up for you many times. So I, will, I open the conversation to, to uh, have both of you talking about trauma. But first, let me finish talking about uh, Karen. She is uh, enjoyed a 20 year career in the animation film biz. She worked on Scooby Doo, uh, Inspector Gadget, Babar's Christmas, and many, many others. Uh, Karen did that for many years. And then I know maybe you can tell us about that is how your life just shifted. And you went, you know, this is super fun and great, but it's just not feeding something in me. I need more. So uh, Karen will be talking about um, humor and healing. And so well, please welcome Karen Monroe Capel. Thank you for being here, Karen. Thanks, Wendy. It's so it's so great to see you. I mean, we, it's been a long, long time since we've really hung out together. So mm -hmm. this is great. Um, well, it's sort of a mixed bag of things. Um, sexuality and humor I'm yes. interested in combining those things and you can't really ignore the healing part of it I just did a workshop this weekend with uh, Ottawa Senior Pride Network all about keep the humor and healing and uh, it was fun we did and I'm going to actually do a bit of some of the similar things that I did with that group on Saturday some laughter yoga things just to get us loosened up a little bit and Often healing from trauma can seem like a, well, it is a very serious thing. And I never underestimate or diminish that in any way. But it is really lovely when we were able to take some of that and kind of normalize it, ease it out a little bit and not make it quite so dramatic. And sometimes mm. having fun with things um, and laughing at our own, own selves, not laughing at other people. No, not, of course. Not polite to point and laugh in any way, but... But to, to have fun with ourselves and realize, gee, maybe it doesn't need to be quite as serious as, as it feels like. Mm. And lightening the mood a little bit can uh, make a difference in, in all of it. And having fun in bed is always a <laughs> thing on my list anyway. <laughs> Yay. Well, I'm so glad you're here to talk more. Let's talk more about, you know, what happens in... Uh, with tr when trauma comes up on your massage table. Let's talk about that later uh, sure. once I bring some more people up. And also what shifted you? What shifted you? Would you okay. share a little bit about you were you were doing animation? You were high level, you know, traveling around and, and Hollywood I'll came make, to- I'll make it sound that way. It was high level. <laughs> well, it sounded, you were the boss. I remember when we were hanging out, you were leading a group of people and, and working with uh, Hollywood types and you, Anyway, yeah. it sounded highfalutin, you know? Well, we'll stick with that story for sure. So, so do you want me to talk about that now or you, you want to with somebody else? Okay, let's bring everybody on. I'm being, okay. I'm going back and forth right now. But, you know, maybe other people can talk about their journeys and how they shifted into offering their healing now. So let's bring on Sonia. 
Sonia, Sonia, she was on last one and she's so delightful. I'd love you, you to come back on. And this is so fascinating. Sonia is a sexual wellness educator who studied sexuality in cinema at Concordia University in Montreal. Isn't that fascinating? I'm fascinated by that. And so now she's taken all the beautiful things she's learned over the years and she offers workshops and seminars to singles and couples on expanding sexual horizons. How cool is that? She explores the aphrodisiacs, sensual aromatherapy, tantra, and BDSM. All fascinating on their own. We could talk, you know, hours on each one of those. <laughs> and I remember taking an aphrodisiac once. We were at a party and somebody offered, it works. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I I'll was, take whatever she's having. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Let's dive. You know what I find so fascinating is generational trauma and trauma because you all deal with trauma in your work. It comes up for each of you. Um, Emma, would you like to open the conversation? That's a, an area you delve into regularly and specialize in. Would you open the conversation around sure. generational trauma and around sexuality and how... And how yeah, do you do oh, it, it's it's all interconnected, and I love mm -hmm. what Karen and Sonia are up to as well. We have a lot of intersections. Um, you know, the thing that I found out, I I started off well, and you we talked about careers as well. So I started off in high tech, and uh, but was always doing healing on the side. So Karen, we have a lot in common. And um, but what I found was, you know, I became a yoga teacher um, first, and after being a you know yoga practitioner for for many 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 years. And uh, when I got into the classroom and started teaching, I found that as people were stretching their bodies and releasing their muscles, um, there, was, there were a lot of emotions that were coming up, right? And uh, I started realizing that, well, there's obviously a connection between you know, blocked emotions and what we store in our body. And it was happening more and more frequently in my classes where people were having these cathartic releases. And so, you know, uh, my husband used to jokingly say, you must be a really bad yoga teacher because people are coming out crying. And I would say, <laughs> no, no, no. In fact, in fact, I'm a good one. But yeah, uh, that's a good yeah, thing. <laughs> right. And um, so he was being tongue in cheek. But uh, so I realized, oh, there's obviously a, a connection. So as I started delving more into this and uh, did some somatically trained uh, somatic coaching uh, program with the Hendrix Institute. I mean, it all started to come together. And I realized that, you know, people don't even know what they're storing in their bodies. Yeah. And some of it is related to things that they've gone through. But science has now shown that uh, we can actually carry trauma from previous generations in our DNA. And that's something that's been scientifically proven. Yeah. And so when I when I started reading those articles, I thought, yeah, this is an area that we really need to delve into and help people understand First of all, you know, what is theirs and what might be a generational thing and also to how to release it, how to mutate and transform it into something more positive. Wow. Beautiful. And Karen, would you talk a little bit about what happens when, you know, what can, what have you experienced? Can you give a scenario yeah. of what, what's occurred on your table and, and uh, how you dealt with it? Yeah, it's interesting because as a, a registered massage therapist here in, in Ontario, Canada, I have to be very careful about, I don't, I cannot wear a hat of discussing sexuality overtly. Um, they're so frightened of, of having us being a seen as being abusive or overstepping our scope of practice. So it's, it's much subtler, but it all goes hand in hand. It all ma mesh, mm -hmm. meshes up whether I'm discussing it overtly or not. Now I did have one client years ago who who um, her, her, she had terrible pain in her back of her neck whenever she went into a full orgasm. And so it really made her not want to have sex because mm -hmm. she was, it was too sore. So we, I was happy that she explained it fully and didn't just say, well, I have a sore neck. You know, she told mm -hmm. me why. Yeah. And so then we were able to work very specifically there. And then later on, she was able to tell me, yeah, now that, that helped it. Um, People don't tend to talk about the more intimate things to me, but they but they may have trauma coming up, and I don't necessarily get into the detail. I'm I'm also a certified coach, life coach, but I'm not doing that. I have to be again careful which hat I'm wearing. But um, 
I just make sure that people feel really safe on the yeah. table so that if something arises and they suddenly just begin to cry a lot or or laugh a lot really mm -hmm. it's all, both mm -hmm. different versions of blowing off tension and and we i just hold the space i don't need to know the story necessarily that is work for hema and other people i can just hold the space for someone to just sob and and clear it out and and then normalize it like this is fine you you can cry and it's okay um so it's it's a little bit more subtle than what other people are doing mm -hmm. um but it's it's still i feel like it's all part of a team to work doing that and if people are mm -hmm. relaxed they're going to have more fun when they're actually with a partner or by themselves but they're they're having um their whole body is more relaxed from a massage than then if they're really uptight it's very hard to enjoy your body if you're really tense right beautiful thank you for sharing that and sonia would you speak on that you know what comes to me is like bdsm can be oh so many things it can be so fun and subtle and 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 it can be you know more dramatic and all kinds of things and i know you provide a very safe space for that and i wonder how do you deal if somebody you know gets triggered and you know how do you during a session how do you handle that i think it's uh as as uh karen and Hima were speaking uh creating that safe space um and encouraging and allowing people to be themselves one of the major reasons why i love working with you wendy and love your festival uh so much uh is because you really co like cover such a wide range of topics. And when we're discussing trauma, I know from my own personal experience, you know, uh, for some like talk, you know, cognitive behavioral theory works for others, maybe massage works. Um, the people that come to me, you know, are, are uh, exploring BDSM or power dynamics um, sometimes, yes, as a means of getting through their trauma. And I'll share a story that I haven't shared yet uh, this time around. Um, I've been doing the festivals with you for a couple of years now, Wendy, uh, but I was quite young and, you know, had my own trauma around my body and my sexuality. Um, and I went away for, to university and uh, was at um, a, a, a gay club in Montreal, not really knowing what I was getting myself into. You know, I was 18. I hadn't really been, well, I, you know, probably went to a couple of clubs, but I walked into this club not realizing with a few of my friends, not realizing that it was like a BDSM night or a kink night. And I, uh, someone was up on the stage and uh, they were getting spanked and flogged and not only was it kind of titillating for me and exciting to watch but it really sort of um spurred something deeper uh and for me i saw this window of opportunity um to to uh address the trauma that i had experienced in my life and um so that sort of led me on a journey uh along with you know other types of therapies as well but a lot of people that come to me, you know, they really find power dynamics and BDSM uh, uh, an alternative route or avenue to explore some of the trauma that, like Hima said, that uh, and Karen ha have mentioned that stored in the body. And uh, for some of us, like I know I've had my challenges with like uh, traditional talk therapy, um, you know, to get through some of that stuff. Um, a lot of times it's just hard for people to even tap into it. It's not even a question of like not wanting that therapy or not wanting that, that um, like resolution. Sometimes it's, we, we're not given the tools to even like yeah. know what it is that we're trying to address. And so things like uh, exploring BDSM or spanking or power dynamics kind of provides an alternative uh, for people to explore that. And um, uh, to answer, uh, getting back to your question, I think really it's just about creating that trust and safety. And, you know, it doesn't happen in the first session sometimes, like sometimes it, 
it takes a few sessions for people to trust you. And I mean, I think as as uh, educators and healers, that's part of the reason, you know, that's part of our, our job and part of the undertaking is, you know, however long it takes to, to uh, build that trust with your clients and with the, the people that come to you. And, and that's in your personal life as well, uh, in terms of like partners and, and whatnot, so. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anything more, Hema, to uh, to add to that? The, I I know it's become such a, a beautifully big topic. We're finally addressing it. I see Dr. Gabor Mate, his festivals mm-hmm. all around. The Sand Conference. What does that stand for? Do you remember uh, S A N D? I know. I don't. I don't know what that is. But you mentioned Gabor Mate. There's also um, a great book called uh, The Body Keeps the Score with, by Bessel van der Kolk. That's also a really great book about what we store in our bodies. But, you know, all of this is like, okay, so trauma is kind of a little bit of a downer, right? But it can, if, if we talk about it and we release it, then it can really help us in our lives and in sexual situations. Um, you know, one of the topics that I'm talking about is also going to be about race and, and diversity. And, you know, there is a specific kind of trauma that, people of color carry in their bodies that other individuals are not aware of. And mm-hmm. so I think it's important to have these conversations because mm-hmm. brown bodies and black bodies, you know, we, we feel things differently. We, we have a different experience of being in our body than someone who's not uh, brown or black. And so it's important to talk about that too, because, you know, all of these things come together, yeah. uh, whether you're on the massage table in a yoga class or, you know, at a really wild club, Sonia, yeah. that sounds like an amazing night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's all, and then it's all related to, to sex, right? Like I get this question all the time. Well, how, how is it related to sex talking about trauma? Well, if you're traumatized, you're not going to be able to tap into your most powerful force, which is your sexual energy. And then you're not going to be experiencing the type of pleasure in your body and your life that you deserve. I mean, we all deserve mm-hmm. to feel pleasure and have great, great sex. But just a lot of people don't know how to get there. Well, first of all, a lot of people won't allow themselves yeah. Yeah. To, to experience that, have great sex, right? Because they're not embodied. And why aren't they embodied? Well, again, it could be any of these things that we just talked about. Trauma, it could be that they're blocked. There can be shame, which is also another trauma. So once you start peeling off those layers, you can get to a level of pleasure and comfort in your body that mm-hmm. you've never experienced before. And, and, I, and I, think it's, I think it's really, really important. You know, like Sonia, I'm also a Neo Tantra teacher. And these are some of the things that, that we work on, you know, in terms of how to access your, your sexual energy and how to make it thrive, how to make it blossom at any age. You know, yeah. people think that mm-hmm. sex is only for people in their 20s. No, I'm sorry. It gets better as you get older, right? And, and so people know, it does. Okay. Oh, Karen, yeah, that was a very emphatic face there. Um, <laughs> um, you know, and so we need people to understand how to tap into that energy at all times during their lives. Mm. And yeah, I think it's it's such an important topic. And thank you, Wendy, for like, creating this festival so we can talk about these things. We, we need yeah. to talk about these mm-hmm. things. Well, I'm I just felt led felt led to do this, and I'm uh, I love all the speakers that I've had on here, and I love the diversity myself. So I'm so glad you do. And I I when you're talking about the ways to get in to embody for myself, I know I've done somatic experiencing. Uh, dance is huge for dance embodiment. Is huge. And yeah. I wonder what mm-hmm. all of you have experienced to really get into your body. What has been, you know, I know people, Karen, that I will not accept a massage. I said, let me buy you a yeah. massage for your birthday. Yeah. They would not enjoy that. Yeah. I, I use a lot of breath um, work to get people in there. Yeah. And sometimes I do it really quietly. I won't even say that I'm doing it with breath work, but I'm, I'm doing that anyway. I, I remember way back when I first began, I really didn't, I didn't really know what I was doing. I had a client come to me who actually said, I actually, I want a massage because I have been traumatized. But I don't want to be touched. And I'm like, okay. So as a young therapist, well, not so young actually, but as young in my career, I really had, to, okay. So I worked off the body um, and that actually was was great. But another person, I was working off the body, and it was really traumatic because he didn't know where I was. 
And so that in fact didn't actually work because his trauma was he was constantly vigilant to see where I was. Mm -hmm. So the common theme I hear here is this, we're listening. We're listening really closely and watching all levels of communication through, through facial expressions, through verbal expression, um, through body expression. And as we watch that, we're teaching our clients in one form or another to also watch themselves, to be able mm. to take what's hidden and bring it forward so that they can go, oh, oh I, I've been sort of, that's been there all my life, but I've never understood it. I didn't know that, gee, I actually do have control of that, or I, I could actually change how I'm responding to something. Um, that's, I find really exciting when I'm listening to all of you talk. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to you have to see it before you can heal it. You have to have some awareness of it. So that's and it's messy. Uh, it can be feel quite messy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else, H Hema? Anything else before we go on to? Uh, I have another topic I'd like to bring up. Is there anything about trauma? Is anybody want to share I, anything? I else? just want to I just want to reiterate what what Karen said around. You have to be aware of it in order to to transmute it. And yeah. so I think one of some of the very basic steps that all, we've all talked about is awareness first in, and, and then getting embodied. Well, maybe it's getting embodied first and then being aware. I'm not sure. I think maybe that, the, yeah, the two might are very closely joined together. But even what, what Sonia shared is a way of getting embodied, yeah. you know, um, and it's a way of feeling things in your body all of a sudden. And that can be a good way to, to release. So I guess, I guess, yeah, there's this whole feeling it and then being aware of it and then changing it. Those are the three things I wanted to highlight. Beautiful. And, and sometimes I think, you know, uh, again, as I was saying earlier, like some, sometimes people just don't even know what it, they know, they, they know they want something different, uh, but they don't know what that is. And I think it's just so wonderful to work with, you know, the other, like some of the, listening to some of the work that other presenters are doing, because, you know, we've sort of taken it upon ourselves to kind of be that guiding light and uh, to, to help people and aid people on their journey of discovery to figure out what that transformation and embodiment looks like for them, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think it's just um, such a valuable, rewarding uh, work that we do. Um, especially when you see people, you know, going through that process and coming out of it, maybe not a hundred percent, you know, rainbows and roses healed, but, you know, making those strides. And, um, for me, like, yeah, just having that connection with one's body and sexuality is just so rewarding. And unfortunately, sometimes it gets put on the back burner to, you know, the daily grind of other facets of life. So um, I think it's really beautiful that we can come together and, and guide people on, on their journeys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yes. It's healing. It that's, I'm the festival, the intent, I don't maybe, you know, make a banner out of it, but ultimately there it's all about healing in order to get into our bodies and to, in order to heal our trauma, the trauma, whatever different levels of trauma different people have. And I'm so glad there are people like you that are helping people. And uh, I love beautiful, to... Wendy. That's beautiful. Mm. Well, Karen disappeared. I know she had to leave early, but I, but anyway, maybe she'll come back. Either way, I'm, uh, I'll just put a little reminder in here for everybody. These are some of the amazing presenters that are going to be with us this weekend, April 2nd and 3rd from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time, join us online. It like feels like tribe. You'll be with your family and you'll learn something. And you know, it's been really, uh, what I really noticed from last year's uh, festival was that uh, couples watched because you know what it does? It opens the conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes couples don't even know where they want to explore. They just know that they'd like to explore something else, but not sure what. Well, um, watch it together. Watch it together or in the 30 days after the festival, you can still have the recordings and watch them with your beloved. And so, well, why don't we play, um, why don't we play uh, the snippets from, a few snippets from last year, Mike. Uh, there's a, just a short two minute 
uh, it's called a sizzle reel, just to give you a snippet of how last year's went, to give you an idea. Mike, can you play that? I'm so glad you're here. So glad you're here at the Sacred Sexual Music Festival. Be ready for aha moments throughout this evening and this weekend. Be ready for your heart being touched and new concepts to enter. We've got a team that's prepared something really great for you all weekend. The polarity of attraction and relationships. How we might be affected by society and religion and how the dynamic of kink play can be therapeutic. My specialty is on emotional wellness. When we exhale the sound, it has an opportunity to go down rather than getting trapped and we get more stretch and space, vibration and energetic space. I'm not hurting her, I'm just really kind of doing it in a soft, gentle way. Helps the movement of the, the butt cheeks feels really nice. You can use the tassels to run down the back. As a man, gay straight, it doesn't matter. As a man, if you want more uh, power in your life, play with your anus more. Oh, my goal for the mothers is to be, to be a source that the child can come to if they're in trouble in particular. It also introduced the world, I'll hold it up once again, it introduced women to breastfeeding and made it, uh, it was a pioneering book. In part it's because O represents to me the very source, the beginning of life. It's for many of us, for any issues that we never addressed in our life, when it comes to creativity, to sensuality, to sexuality, to whatever it is and relation, uh, relationships, we might be pushed by the universe in order to address it. You know, and the one thing about sex, I used to say, it's the second most powerful drive in the human body after food. So once your tummy's full, you're going to be thinking about sex. Well, that isn't true, really. Sex is a far more evasive quality. I know that they Well, that was just, we had so much fun last year at that online festival, the Sacred Sexual Music Festival. And uh, and we're doing it again this weekend, April 2nd and 3rd. And I have to laugh, but every time I play that and I hear Will Blunderfield, who will also be presenting again this, <laughs> yes. this one, is just play with your anus. You know what? I, it makes me smile, but you know, the point is, the point is everything is open. Open the conversation. You know, you know how many men have prostate issues because they they don't, you know, they're oh okay, you know, can't do anything around that. So it's just to open the conversation. So even though it makes me smile every time he says that, um, I this is a safe festival. This is a place where everything can be talked about. There's no shame, there's no guilt. And I'm hoping you'll join us. Hoping you join us this weekend. Go to sacredsexualmusicfestival.com and buy, you can register there. Buy tickets and register. You know what? We just have a few minutes, and I'd just love to touch on, Hema, because uh, you work with spiritual teachers and leaders about dismantling racism, bias, and oppression. Would you share how, how do you deal with people, like, clued out people who, you know, we don't have a clue, and... And I know that's, uh, 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 yeah, I don't even remember the term. Um, privilege, is that what you're privilege. trying to refer to? Privilege. Right, right. Total privilege. Well, I think, I think in this day and age, if someone is not aware that there are racial issues in North America, Canada, and uh, US you know, uh, as well, and uh, I think I wanted to mention that we have a Canadian crew here, because I'm originally from Ottawa, so and, and lived in Montreal for many years. So Sonia, I don't know where you're located, but uh, so it's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, so if, if people haven't been, you know, you, you can't miss it. It's in the news everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, even the latest incident at the Oscars, it's all, you know, there's a lot of racial uh, overtones there that people are talking about as well. And so if you're not aware that there are racial issues, then we've got a problem, number mm. one. So mm. Wendy, I've not run into any people who aren't aware, but what the problem is, it's particularly in spiritual communities like this and, and more kind of, um, you know, cutting edge, what I call leading edge festivals, is that people don't really understand appropriation. 
And, um, you know, I've run into that a lot. In fact, I just ran into it recently um, at a previous retreat, not the one that I was just at, but uh, where people were, you know, really fixated on understanding something from India. And when I either gently point out that it's incorrect or that there is a better way or perhaps more evolved way of looking at it, you know, I got, it got a lot, I got a lot of pushback. Yeah. And I was really surprised because, of, you know, these people were non-Indian and I'm doing the studying on these things. And uh, so I got a lot of uh, pushback and I thought, wow, this is really interesting. People don't even understand to what extent they're appropriating um, and then, you know, misleading with, with uh, wrong information and so on. So that's one aspect of dismantling racism and, and, and spiritual communities is just, you know, what are you saying? What language are you using? What are you, what are you, what cultures are you pulling from? And are you giving credit where credit is due? And do you understand the source of the information that you're, that you're using? Um, but the other thing is then like, you know, re like real racism where where people are treated differently because of the color of their skin and that it's little microaggressions. And I know that that term is probably more common or more heard these days. But, you know, little microaggressions like uh, I get the comment all the time. Oh, uh, you speak English really well for someone who's Indian. And I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. I I'm actually I'm actually born in Canada. And like you, I'm a, I'm a North American, but I have a very rich cultural heritage and my, my whole family's from India. But, you know, that's a microaggression. Yeah. Right? You're making an assumption based on the color of someone's skin as to what they're going to sound like and how they're going to behave. Mm. And at the end of the day, it's really about seeing us as individuals, right? We don't have the traits of the overall, um, you know, group. And, and so it's about kind of stripping all of that away. And again, I mentioned before, you know, people um, who are in brown bodies, brown and black bodies, we experience life differently. We experience our bodies differently. And so if you're in partnership or relationship with someone who is a person of color, it's yeah, there's there's some sensitivities that you need to have. So, yeah, it's a great, great topic to talk about. Yeah, oh, I'm so looking forward to that and mm -hmm. improving. And I have to tell sh uh, share a, a short story. When I first put out the Sacred Sexual Music Festival in Vancouver, somebody in Toronto saw that I used a Hindi uh, symbol in my logo. And at first, somebody just wrote to me and said, I don't like your, your symbol. It doesn't look like sacred sexuality. And I went, well, then don't come. You know, I was snarky. And it was a process of conversations and... Um, I'm, I feel ashamed at how I was at the beginning because I didn't listen, but for anybody or for me anyway, it occurred, I was in tears after a few conversations where a girlfriend was writing to me and who knew both of us and was telling me how I needed to open my mind. And I trusted her and I trust, and then I came to trust both of them. And I was, I was in tears by the end and such a great learning. And I'm so grateful for these two women that helped me. It was not their job. You know, they could have just reported me and, and uh, taken me offline. You know, they could have. And it was an incredible learning experience for me. And so I can see that it takes pain to go from a way of thinking to another way of thinking. You, mm -hmm. it, there's a grieving process because if something is different in my brain and I have to right. adjust my life. And, and that's not easy. And so I can see, uh, yes, may I be open? May I remain open? May I be called right. on? It's about, it's about listening. And even in this particular instance, not, not to like point the finger at you, but you know, it's I'm Hindu okay. is the religion, Hindi is the language. And there's just, um, you know, so you would say it's actually Hindu uh, sacred symbols that you were using potentially. I don't know what it was exactly. And, you know, Hindi is a language that people speak. So, you know, there's little subtleties like that um, to, to, to understand. And so I'm, I'm glad that you're open. I'm glad you have that learning. But there, there's just so much more like that yeah. that we need to do as, as a group, right, to, to bring people along. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for explaining that to me. And I'm super grateful you are speaking about that topic at the festival. So yeah. we can all awesome. take ourselves up and, uh, you know, learn and be better for everyone. So it's a better place for everyone. Absolutely. So I'm so grateful. We're coming to the end of our time together. Is there any last bits of were any words 
well, other than come everybody, come this weekend, <laughs> go to sacredsexualmusicfestival.com and buy your tickets. You're going to get, you know, this is filled with depth, this festival. It's filled with delight and, and fun and lots of learning and watch it with your beloved and uh, watch it alone. Or, it's all good. Or a bunch of friends. Yeah, get a bunch of friends. totally. <laughs> Make it a weekend party. Yep. So... Hema, thank you so much for being here. Thank I'm you so for having for me. I'm so excited. I love yeah. what you're up to, Wendy. This is thank awesome. You. Karen, mm -hmm. thank you so much for being here. Again, Sonia B, thank you for being here. Thanks, Wendy. Mwah. See you all this weekend, Saturday, yeah. 10 to 6. All righty. Bye, everyone. Thank you Bye, so much. Bye, everyone.